Welcome back to Med Smarter, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Today we're going to look over the gram-negative algorithm and help you answer some of those questions a little bit easier. So as you can see here, this is our gram-negative algorithm. First and foremost, we are dealing with gram-negative already because we've done a gram stain, and the gram stain shows up with pink colonies. If they were more blue or purple, then we're going to be dealing with a gram-positive organism. But we, we know that we have a gram-negative organism because the color of that organism under a gram stain is pink. Let's zoom in a little bit and take a look a little closer at some of this information. So we've got a gram-negative organism, and we can then look at their specific structure under a microscope and determine if we're dealing with diplococci, coxobacilli, or curved rods. If we see diplococci and it's aerobic, we can check for maltose acid detection. And basically what that is doing is we are adding a carbohydrate of maltose to the solution containing the microorganism as well as a pH indicator. And if that solution turns yellow after adding that car carbohydrate of maltose, then we have a maltose acid detection positive. That will indicate that we are dealing with Neisseria meningitidis. If we do not see that change in color from red to yellow after adding our maltose to that solution, then we are dealing with Neisseria gonorrhea or Meraxella. If what we see under the microscope is the coxobacilli, then we are dealing with one of these organisms. Haemophilus influenza, Bordetella pertussis, Pasturella brucella, Francisella tularensis, or Actinobacter bumani. If we see curved rods, we know that they're going to be oxidase positive. We'll discuss oxidase positive here in just a minute when we get down to the bacilli. So then we can determine what specific microorganism we're dealing with based upon how they grow. So if it grows under 42 degrees Celsius conditions, then we're dealing with Campylobacter jejuni. If it grows in an alkaline median, then we're talking about Vibrio cholera. And if it produces urease, this is Helicobacter pylori. Finally, let's look at our bacilli. So under the microscope, we've determined that we have bacilli present in our test, and we're going to check its lactose fermentation. As with our maltose acid detection, the lactose fermentation adds a lactose carbohydrate as the carbon source along with a phenol red indicator. And if that microorganism utilizes that lactose for energy, then it will turn a yellow color because its pH is going down. So if we have yellow indication, we know that we have lactose fermenters and it can occur fast or slow. The speed of that lactose fermentation will determine what we're dealing with. E. coli, Klebsiella, and Enterobacter are fast lactose fermenters. Citrobacter and Serratia are slow lactose fermenters. If we do not have any lactose fermentation, then we can check their oxidase status. To determine oxidase, uh, this is going to check for a terminal enzyme in the aerobic respiration called cytochrome C oxidase, also known as cytochrome A3. And if it produces this, then it will give us a reaction on our uh, auger plate. So we are going to check for oxidase, and if we do see oxidase positive, then we're dealing with pseudomonas. If we are oxidase negative, we are going to check its hydrogen sulfide production on our TSI auger. If it does produce hydrogen sulfide, then we're talking about Salmonella and Proteus, or Shigella and Yersinia when it does not produce hydrogen sulfide. Once again, come back later and we will discuss more of these microbacteria in further detail. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.